Oxford in the greater city of Manchester on the line. Chris is the Managing Director of uh, Glue Media as well as ilovemediacityuk.com and is no doubt well placed, a well-placed expert on the very topic of neighbours, Jason and Kylie. Um, Chris, welcome to uh, WinFM. Um, thanks for joining us all the way from uh, the UK. It's an absolute pleasure, Mark. How are you? Oh, mate, I, I, I'm on top of the world, uh, based on the uh, ashes. How are you feeling at the moment? <laughs> Crestfallen, I think, would be the best bet for that. I think the um, the English guys have gone over there a little bit too secure in the knowledge that we won it quite recently. And we've suddenly gone back to the 1980s and back to the time of many tears when you guys just beat us hands down at every ashes test that we seem to be involved in. Fantastic. So you can say we can have Shane Warne back, can't we? <laughs> yeah, he's a nemesis of every uh, English cricket fan, but yeah, yeah. Okay, well, this show is not about Shane Warne. Today's show is all about love songs, dedications, and also um, Jason and Kylie celebrating their 25th anniversary of the release song of Especially For You. So, Chris, can you tell no. us a little bit about your experience Um Possibly as an expert on neighbours over there. Um, <laughs> what do you think about I, Jason and Kylie? Well, um, I've got a lot in, in common with Jason and Kylie in that I'm the same age as them, and that's about it. I um, didn't get the looks, I didn't get the charisma. However, their impact on UK TV in the 1980s was incredible. We had had nothing like this at all, especially from Australia. Um, and as you know, the UK has this real affinity with, with Australia and we always feel like we're all part of the same language. And um, for Kylie and Jason to be part of our lives, we got in from school every day. The first program you'd watch as a teenager would be Neighbours. And we grew up with, with Kylie and Jason through our formative teenage years, really. Um, and now we've actually got Kylie Minogue back here in, in Salford at Media City UK. Um, presenting our, our big favourite uh, Saturday night TV show of The Voice. Right. Well, just so, to, just just on that topic, what is um, Media City for for those of us here in Australia who don't know? Okay, so uh, Media City is now the home of the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation, and ITV, which is independent television across the UK, and all the media um, hub, if you like, now for UK activity nationally and internationally is being focused around media city uk it's not taking away from what london still has which was the original home of the bbc there's still plenty of activity there in terms of media and broadcasting but what this has done is is go out to the third city of the uk which is manchester and then the neighboring city of salford and made that into this purpose-built area on the reclaimed docklands of salford and turned it into what is just the most contemporary, amazing workspace of, of Media City UK. So if you can imagine uh, 21st century architecture uh, mixed with the Salford social history of the 1800s, it's like the Industrial Revolution brought together. So okay. it's a modern revolution of media. And I guess that's why the uh, like programs like The Voice ha are located there, because um, from what I've been following... Uh, in some of the uh, news reports, it, it looks like an amazing studio. It looks like an amazing whole precinct just built up for the media. That's right, yeah. And, and that involves Salford University, which is the leading uni on um, journalism training. So we're involved with that. I run a media company there promoting businesses who have maybe not thought about getting in, into the media before. And it gives them a completely different perspective on their business on how to promote yourself without using the traditional methods. And every day there's something new coming in. Digital media just seems to come from nowhere. Um, you think that you know about something and then that's upgraded the next week. And it, it's so exciting. And, and, and to have music shows like The Voice and to see people who are iconic across the world like Tom Jones and Kylie um, to be part of our little little village here, um, it's, it's just an incredible feeling. And we welcome them with open arms. And we, that's a great thing about the place as well. Anybody who comes here um, feels like they're really embraced with, with the love of the people of the area. And that's why we have I Love Media City, of course. Well, that's brilliant, Chris. But um, you couldn't have plugged that place any better if you tried. Um, but just just going back to Jason and, uh, and Kylie for a second, um, seven hits. Uh, for Kylie in the UK, seven number one hits and uh, four for Jason, especially for you was just one of them. Um, do you, 
as a teenager, did you um, walk around singing especially for you? Uh, what was your experience of their music? I, I, my, my memory of that, which obviously is a few years back now, is um, is always a warm one. You always feel just like a little bit of an innocence, really, in terms of teenage years. And the harshness of growing up and being a teenager was softened a little bit by seeing these great looking people on your TV who you really aspired to be like and get their haircuts and love their way of life and obviously Melbourne looks fantastic in the sunshine and that's what we wanted in Manchester which is so rainy all the time and we looked at the glamour of their lives um, and I, I think it was an aspiration for us all as teenagers the fact the music at the time maybe we didn't admit that we like that music as growing lads in Manchester yeah. because on the era that was just about to occur which was a Manchester which was quite grunge music of Oasis and the Charlatans and the Stone Roses um, and the Happy Mondays and, and that kind of thing. So it probably wasn't ultra cool to be saying that you liked it, but uh, we all did. Secretly, we were all massive fans. And Kylie and Jason's wedding with um, Suddenly Playing is just something that still evokes great emotion um, yeah, yeah, from we... teenagers and yeah, we just heard that before a little bit earlier on in the program, and uh, and it was astounding to to know that it was the first time ever the whole cast were were um, um, put together for that for one episode. It had never been done before in the very famous episode five hundred and twenty three. Um, did you have any other um, uh, favourite characters in the show, Chris? Yeah, um, uh, personally, um, Mrs. Horrocks isn't about at the moment, so I can tell you, plain Jane was just my perfect woman once she'd gone through that transformation, and um, I, I could have strangled Mike at the time because I actually thought she was going to turn up in the UK for me. Um, but that, yeah, that's one memory. The other favourite character for a lot of guys in, in the UK was Henry, um, oh, Kylie's... Yeah, Craig uh, McLaughlin. Yeah, he, he was a massive hit in the UK. Um, and he came over here and tried out his musical um, uh, foray at one time that didn't quite go so well. But he, he, he did well at the time, but it didn't have much longevity to it. But yeah, still a real popular character over here. What a great guy as well. Yeah, and what about Bouncer and Mrs. Mangle and Harold and Madge? Do, <laughs> are they still fondly remembered in the UK? Uh, yeah, I mean, Harold and Madge famously filmed um, an episode or a couple of episodes from Stockport, which is, um, I live just, just in Stockport. So um, they, they came over here when um, Harold went missing for all those years. Um, and I think it was, Anne Charleston's got a real link to the UK and she's a, a very well-known household name over here. Um, and Harold, obviously, um, Ian wrote uh, the famous Cell Block H script, so, which is a, a great cult classic of the time over here as well. Fantastic. And um, did you ever um, have you ever personally met any um, anyone from Neighbours yourself? Uh, I've I've been in the same room as Kylie. That's all about all I can say really. Um, I don't think we came eye to eye, but you know she needs to wear taller heels for that to happen. And I'm sure that one day that she'll grace um, my presence and make me feel a very very happy man. Fantastic. Um, we're running out of time via the satellite here. So um, I was just wondering, can you sing a little bit of a theme song of, of Neighbours with me? Sing a little bit. Oh, God. Right. OK. Yeah. Fire away. <laughs> <All right. laughs> neighbours. Everybody needs good neighbours to be there for one another. Oh, this is... When you that's Perfect. shocking, Chris. That's absolutely shocking. Yeah. But I, I love your attitude. I'm actually going to put that on Facebook. That's that's a classic. <laughs> um, now, today's program and uh, is all about um, love songs, dedications, and, uh, and happy memories and things um, that mean special things for people. Um, so I was wondering, did you have a dedication or for someone special in your life at the moment that you'd like to dedicate a song to? And who would that person be? And what would and, and what song have you would you have selected for them? Okay. Um, well, obviously, my, my beautiful wife um, gave me two beautiful children, Joseph and Madeline. It was Joseph's birthday this weekend, and he's six years old. Um, the, the, the first song that we always remember about Joseph was what he used to sing with me. Um, as a very little tiny little boy of 18 months and amazed people when he when he sang this song and that's the classic My Way by Frank Sinatra. 
Well, Rob, I'm sure you you can program that quickly for us, um, which will be fantastic. So this is my way for Joseph Horrocks over in Manchester in the UK, Chris Horrocks from Glue Media and I Love Media City UK.com. That's a bit of a mouthful. Thank you so much for your time and joining us here today at 89, 88.9 WinFM here in Werribee. Thanks, Mark. Great to spend time with you. And by the way, if you bumped into Kylie, tell her Mark says good day. <laughs> I'll do that. Thanks a lot. See you later. Here's my way, Frank Sinatra. And now the end is near And so I face the final curtain My friend, I'll say it clear I'll state my case of which I'm certain I've lived a life that's full I traveled each and every highway and more much more than this I did it my way Regret I've had a few But then again Too few to mention I did What I had to do Saw it through Without exemption I planned Each charted course each careful step along the byway And more, much more than this I did it my way Yes, there were times I'm sure you knew When I bit off more than I could chew but through it all, when there was doubt, I ate it up and spit it out. I faced it all, and I stood tall, and did it my way. I've loved, I've laughed and cried. I've had my fill, my share of losing And now, as tears subside I find it all so amusing To think I did all that And may I say not in a shy way Oh no Oh no, not me I did it my way For what is a man? What has he got? If not himself Then he has not To say It was my